Aunt Jennifer's Tigers is a poem written by Ed Rene Rich and it is in the syllabus of grade 12th CBSE. Before I start the poem, I would like to discuss the poetic devices used in the poet poem. Uh, the first poetic device which I'm going to cover is metaphor. To understand it more clear clearly, let us compare metaphor and simile. Simile and metaphor are used to make comparison between to unlike things. In simile, we use as and like to make a comparison, whereas in metaphor, we don't use as and like. For example, in the first sentence, wherein it is written that she is as brave as a lion is a simile, because herein we are using as brave as a lion. In the next sentence, it is written she is a lion. This sentence is a metaphor because herein we are not using as and like. In the another sentence, love is like a battlefield. Love is like a battlefield is, um, uh, is a simile, whereas love is a battlefield is a metaphor. So I hope the difference is clear. Simile and metaphor are used to compare two unlike things. The only difference is in case of simile, we use as and like, whereas in case of metaphor, we don't use as and like. When I'm saying she is a lion, it's not that, that she is a lion. It simply means to say that she has bravery like a lion. She has got strength like a lion. So this is how metaphor and simile are used. The next poetic device is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sound. We often have read this, uh, you know, rhyme in our junior classes. Ba ba black sheep. In this repetition of B sound is you know alliteration alliteration is given to, uh, for you know making the poem or a song to give it like rhythm or musical effect next is transferred epithet epithet means adjective if we talk about the definition of transferred epithet it is a figure of speech in which an epithet or adjective grammatically qualifies a noun other than the person or thing it is actually describing it's very much clear it is uh, an adjective which grammatically qualifies a noun other than the person or thing it is actually describing in other words it also means uh, uh, it is also defined in this way to combine an incongruous adjective with an incongruous noun that means unrelatable the uh, adjective and noun are unrelatable uh, we'll be able to make it more clear with the usage of some examples like tired feet it's not the feet which are tired the person is tired stupid smile it is not the smile which is stupid it is the person who is giving that smile Foolish ideas, idea is not foolish. It is the person who is giving the idea is foolish. Lonely nights, nights are not lonely. It is the person who is feeling lonely. So here in this case, you see tired is an adjective. Feet is a noun. Stupid is an adjective. Smile is a noun. Foolish is an adjective. Ideas, a noun. Lonely is, is, the, uh, is the adjective. And nights, you know, it's noun. So herein, this is the, you know, way transferred epithet is made. It is, you know, a combination of an adjective plus noun. And many often those are unrelatable. Here in this poetry also, you know, the when it is written that, you know, terrified hands, that is the example of transferred epithet. In somewhere, in some of the books, it is also referred to as cynic turkey. But I would suggest I endorse more that it is, you know, a transferred epithet. Whereas synecdoche, it, you know, if it is written, it is also correct. Synecdoche is a literary device in which a part of something represents the whole. And it is also, you know, uh, it, it can also be written because terrified hands. See, hands are not terrified. So through hand, whole Aunt Jennifer is being described here that Aunt Jennifer is Je Jennifer is terrified or scared of her husband. So synecdoche is a literary device in which a part of something represents the whole, like here, hand of Aunt Jennifer represents her full self. And the same synecdoche example can also be seen in the poetry Ozymandias, wherein, you know, uh, the line wherein it is written, the hands 
in these lines the hands the hand that mocked them the hand that mocked them the hand is referring the hand the hair in the hand is referring to that sculptor sculptor so hand is referring to that particular person so you know that is why this this can also be taken as a synecdoche okay. so moving further let's discuss the qualities of aunt jennifer and qualities of her own creation which are tigers which she is embroidered on that panel aunt jennifer is a docile person meek she is terrorized she feels scared she is enslaved she feel like a slave to her husband uh, and her positive qualities she is very creative uh, you know through her creativity only she has embroidered beautiful scenery of tigers who are shown as prancing fearlessly they are fearless they are courageous and they are free they are not you know under anyone so this is the full poem which we are going to discuss now i'm going to read it aunt jennifer's tigers prance across the screen prance is a word which means walk with elongated steps prance is a word which also means walk with the elongated st- along with elongated steps with full of courage and confidence without any fear aunt jennifer's tigers walk across a screen they are shown as bright topaz topaz is a you know gem denizens denizens means inhabitants of a world of green world of green means jungle they do not fear the men beneath the tree in the same you know uh, embroidery on the panel she is also shown some men sitting beneath the tree these tigers are not at all afraid of the men sitting beneath the tree they pace they walk in sleek chivalric certainty they walk with full confidence without any fear aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull see in the first four lines we've talked about what aunt jennifer has you know embroidered on that screen she has embroidered those tigers they are shown as bright topaz denizens of a world of green they are not at all scared of men sitting beneath the tree they are full of confidence courage and they are fearless whereas now we see aunt jennifer doing the artwork her fingers flutter when she is doing this you know needle work which is showing that aunt jennifer herself is not at all like her tigers which are being described in first four lines she even finds the ivory needle very hard to pull why because the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand aunt jennifer is not at all happy uh, you know from her marriage uh, her wedding is a massive weight on her because she is being dominated by her husband and she is you know not at all happy in it massive weight of uncle's wedding band is a symbol of unhappy marriage moving in the next stanza when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie here in in this last stanza poem directly moves to the future in case aunt jen when aunt jennifer will die she will die with the same fear this fear will again go to her, go with her you know even after her death she will be ringed with the ordeals she was mastered by throughout her life whereas the tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid the tigers which she's made on the panel they will keep on prancing proudly and without any fear of anything so the poetry is a comparison a stark comparison between the artist and her creation artist is not at all like her own creation whereas in the undertone of this poem we can see that aunt jennifer wishes to become like her tigers moving further let's talk about this poetry stanza wise aunt jennifer's tigers prance across the screen bright up as denizens of a world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty the stanza 1 you can take a click of it also and it is also available in my uh, blog which is supreet deol blog spot you can search it there and it is also in the description uh, the link is given in the description also stanza 1 says aunt's creativity is being extolled here directly or indirectly the poet has extolled extol means praised poet has a, a praised uh, directly the creativity of aunt jennifer she has embroidered tigers very vividly and beautifully vividly means clearly tigers are shown as prancing here elegantly unafraid and gallantly whereas men are shown sitting beneath the tree 
directly or indirectly we can see tigers shown as unafraid of the men sitting beneath the tree suggests aunt's innermost feeling of becoming like a tiger when you know aunt jennifer she's embroidered those tigers and she's deliberately shown tigers you know being unafraid of the men sitting beneath the tree it simply suggests that aunt jennifer's it is her un, innermost feeling or desire to have that particular feeling to have that particular trait or quality to be unafraid of everything stanza 2 talks about aunt jennifer's finger fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand and if i talk about its explanation though aunt is shown as embroidering gallant fearless and confident tigers yet her fluttering fingers through wool suggests her apprehensions and weakness now see there is a difference what she is creating she is not at all like that her animals those tigers which she's you know uh, embroidered on that panel they are gallant they are fearless they are confident whereas she is her fingers are fluttering which is a sign that she is scared of something she is weak she is docile gradually it comes to four from the next two lines that is massive weight and it goes to aunt jennifer's hand we come to know that aunt jennifer is a victim of male dominance dominance she is scared of her husband and for her marriage is a huge burden to carry because it is a kind of unsuccessful marriage she is not at all happy from this marriage moving to the last stanza when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie you know terrified hands it can be taken as a transferred epithet also and synecdoche also still ringed with ordeal she was mastered by the tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid so last stanza says it takes us directly to the future because it is in the future uh, future tense when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie it's not that aunt is dead when she will die in case she doesn't you know voice out her concerns in case she doesn't stand for her rights the stanza takes us directly to the future when aunt would be dead she would die ringed with ringed means surrounded surrounded with the same problems whereas her tigers would prance unafraid it feels from the last stanza that the poet wishes to convey she gives a caution to the victims of male 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 dominance to raise their voices against injustice else they would die with the same problems and wouldn't be free even after their death this is what the poet wishes to convey so let's discuss the poetic devices once again alliteration fingers fluttering prancing proudly chivalric saturnity and hyperbole massive weight of wedding band and it is also a symbol of unhappy marriage hyperbole or uh, because it's an exaggerated uh, kind of comparison that you know wedding band has been shown as of massive weight symbols aunt jennifer who's a you know symbol of victor is she is a victim of male dominance uncle jennifer domineering husband though he's not ref, though he is not like, like actually into the poem but he's referred to so uncle jennifer he is domineering husband and tiger's courage and confidence they are symbols of courage and confidence wedding band is a symbol of unhappy marriage metaphor to pass denizens ringed with ordeals and transfer epithet or synecdoche terrified fingers now see this poem brings to the fore the agony of a women of a uh, you know of all those women sorry it's not a here a is not to be used here the poem brings to the fore the agony of women suppressed and dominated by her husband the poem brings to the fore the agony of a woman w o m a n suppressed and dominated by a husband the poem criticizes the male chauvinistic society that fails to acknowledge the pain and hurt felt by the dominated women counterpart counterpart male chauvinistic society it refers to the petakan you know society our society you know it is petakial society which says you know wherein males are shown as more dominating than female the trends are changing now we all are aware of it now let's discuss the questions important questions of this story why are aunt's fingers fluttering very important question and the answer goes like aunt jennifer is the victim of male domination she loves to knit tigers for the realization of her dreams while she does so she finds it difficult to pull her light ivory needle due to the weight of the marriage ring that her husband put in her finger years ago she is so much scared of her husband that even in his absence she trembles with fear 
simply her fingers are fluttering because she is you know scared of her husband she is dominated throughout her life she has been into an unhappy kind of marriage that is why that you know apprehension that particular you know scare it has taken a permanent place in her heart and it doesn't go away that is why she, her fingers are fluttering though her husband is not present in that scene also when she is knitting those tigers and all that it comes to lie that it is her innermost desire that she wishes to become like tigers she wishes to have those qualities that her tigers possess why does the what does the wedding band symbolize in this particular poem the wedding band symbolizes unhappy marriage Aunt Jennifer is being dominated by her husband. She is not at all happy from her married life. What sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand? The massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. Sits here refers to domination over someone's freedom. For Aunt Jennifer, her husband's wedding ring was no sign of love or care. For her, it was a sign of suppression and burden. Obviously, when something is not liked by us, we take it as a burden only. So, when Aunt Jennifer she is into a very unhappy marriage wherein she is dominated, obviously she takes this marriage as a burden. Eventually, obviously she'll take it as a burden. What conflict in marriage has been referred to by the poet in the poem? The conflict is. The conflict of being dominated by the male counterpart is referred here. Aunt Jennifer is not having even the basic independence. It is clear because when she is knitting, when she is doing that embroidery work, her fingers fluttering means to say that even her basic independence is not there. She is scared even in the absence of her husband. She is dominated to this extent that even the absence of her husband, she feels scared and suffocated. so we can imagine her condition poor condition now interpret the symbols found in this poem symbols i've already discussed aunt jennifer she symbolizes submissive and tortured woman uncle jennifer dominant and cruel husband tigers symbolize bravery strength vitality and fearlessness needle work by aunt jennifer it's an epitome of creativity and compelling beauty example pranks across the screen she injects work with a triumph triumphant vitality it simply means to say that she is so creative that you know her creation her creation feels like real feels like real how do denizens and chivalric add to our understanding of the tiger's attitude like all beasts of prey the tigers are the denizens of the forest denizens mean inhabitants residents they live far away from human settlements they are called chivalric you know courageous this indicates the majestic and honorable position that they occupy in the world of animals simply you know obviously these tigers are taken as you know kings of you know those uh, you know where wherever they live wherever they reside in the jungle they are taken as kings they have their own territories so the use of use of the words denizens and chivalric adds to our understanding of the tigers attitudes as against it aunt jennifer is an inhabitant or a denizen of rich lifestyle but without freedom she has become desolate sad and fearful even in the sophisticated house so i hope you could make it out describe aunt jennifer's tigers how are they different from aunt jennifer this has been the poetry has been a comparison it's a full a full comparison between aunt jennifer and her creation aunt jennifer's tigers are a picture of strength beauty and subtlety they seem to be jumping across a screen it we are talking about aunt's creativity she is so creative that she is vividly created them and beautifully created them that it seems as if they were jumping they pace in sleek chivalric subtlety they are confident and impressive aunt jennifer whereas she is a weak depressed and terrified person life has been a cup of woes for her woes means sadnesses and griefs she is still in the grip of those ordeals and terrors that she faced and suffered from dining during her married life it's not dining it's during her married life her fingers are so terrified that means she herself is so terrified that they find it hard to pull even the ivory needle thus the contrast is amply highlighted comparison has been amply highlighted in this poem 
how does aunt jennifer express her bitterness and anger against the male dominated society she expresses it uh, you know by creating those tigers who are shown as you know not at all afraid of the males aunt jennifer is too terrified to openly resist the oppression that she is she is a victim of obviously we know that she is scared of her husband she can't openly resist it she expresses her bitterness and anger against male dominance silently through her art that is why she deliberately shows tigers prancing unafraid of the men sitting beneath the tree thank you subscribe my channel like and comment follow my blog for notes on this that is sukpreet deol blogspot thank you k